Do you remember all those dampness issues we had towards the rear of the property? Well, I think we can safely say we found, what am I even pointing at? I think we can safely say we found the root cause of those damp problems. Hi folks, welcome back to the show and our 1920s semi-detached UK renovation that we're working on at the moment and you may remember all of the damp problems we had towards the rear of the property. We had big damp problems at the front as well and that was a broken gully and um, we knew there was damp problems at the back of the property. We had damp rising up one of the walls in the kitchen. We had to replace the entire kitchen floor because the damp proof course was bridged but I always said there will be a root cause to those damp problems and you've got to find the root cause before you kind of um, put the entire thing to bed because otherwise the problem will just come back. Let me quickly explain what's going on here in case you haven't seen previous videos or you just want me to kind of summarize how the dampness has been getting into the property and why resolving this is so important. So we're basically looking at the back of the house here Obviously the brickwork goes all the way down to the foundations, I haven't shown the actual foundations on this, but we've then got the external ground level and the internal ground level and here kind of roughly is where that drain is. So this room here is the kitchen, this room here is the living room. And then about 150, 200 mil above the external ground level we've got the damp proof course and the damp proof course is a layer of bitumen on top of the bricks and it literally stops damp from rising up the walls so you don't end up with damp walls inside the property. It's absolutely critical that you've got a good damp proof course. If you haven't, you do need to look into other remedial measures. But luckily, I know that our damp proof course is absolutely fine because I've seen evidence of how good a condition a damp proof course is in, even though it's 100 years old and it's made of bitumen. The damp proof course gets called a DPC and in Older properties, sometimes this can be of dubious quality and you can get areas where damp penetrates through the DPC and up into your internal walls of the house and that can cause a problem. But there's no evidence anywhere in this property that the DPC itself has failed. Generally speaking, the bricks that are below the DPC are engineering bricks and they are more capable of withstanding frost because obviously when bricks get wet, they can absorb water and when the water freezes, it can cause the bricks to kind of explode. Once you get above the DPC level, you can generally use kind of any type of bricks because these don't get as wet and therefore are less likely to get frost damage. As it happens, in older houses, generally all of the bricks are absolutely solid, but it varies from area to area and depends what the houses are built with but in this property there are no engineering bricks all of the bricks are effectively engineering bricks they're all very very hard bricks then we've got our floors and in the living room it's a suspended floor with a nice big air gap underneath where air can circulate all the way from air bricks at the back all the way through honeycomb holes in the sleeper walls and whatnot, all the way to the front of the property. The problem was in this house, and it was a bit of a design flaw really, is that they'd installed a concrete floor in the kitchen. This was almost certainly original to the property, but this concrete floor bridged the damp proof course. And as you can kind of see here, this floor is at the same ultimate floor level as these joists over here, but look at where the damp proof courses. And this is really an absolute critical point when it comes to property maintenance. You must make sure that the DPC isn't getting bridged because all that happens here is that water from the ground comes up through the concrete and it just goes around the damp proof course and then into the brickwork further up. And water will just follow the path of least resistance to try and dry out. And generally that means coming up the walls as far as possible and then it'll evaporate and it'll go away. So this was clearly a problem. You can't have the damp proof course being bridged like that. And that's why we ended up having to rip out the kitchen floor. I've only shown the concrete coming to here so you can kind of tell what was going on. But this obviously went all the way across the floor and bridged at the back wall as well next to this drain. So any water coming up the wall here from this dodgy drain is going to easily bridge across into this concrete and completely bypass the DPC and 
water's going to work its way up these internal walls. And that's what we found. We had major dampness in the back wall internally, and probably the worst and most obvious was on this internal supporting wall here, where dampness was just working its way up behind the wallpaper and causing all the wallpaper to fall off and whatnot. And on top of that, if you remember, this doorway was through into our hall here, and the dampness was bridging across here. It had rotted the wooden wall plate at the bottom here, and it was causing this structural wall here to completely fail. When you start getting structural walls failing like that because of damp, you run into serious problems, like really serious problems. So this is something that had to be fixed. So as you've probably seen on previous videos, we dug out the old concrete floor so that the DPC wasn't getting bridged anymore, and we installed a new suspended timber floor with nice ventilation all the way from the back of the house through the front of the house to match all of the other floors in the property that were absolutely in mint condition. But the one thing that always puzzled me was why was this floor so damp in the first place? And at that time we didn't know about the drainage problems at the back of the property. We knew about the problems at the front. But the floor in the living room was generally very, very dry. It was dusty underneath the floor. But when we removed the concrete floor from the kitchen, the subfloor was wet or it was certainly damp. So we had to find the root cause as to why this floor was so damp. Internal floors generally shouldn't be that damp, especially if you've got one floor that is very dry and another floor that is very wet. There has to be something that's making that floor so wet. And even with a timber suspended floor, you don't want the subfloor to be wet because that can cause future problems. So you, you want your subfloor to be nice and dry. So you've got to get to the root cause of these sort of problems and dry your house out. Water is the enemy to houses. And by the way, while we're on this subject, I've got to give a quick shout out to Aiden from Building Ace of You. I know he follows this channel and I follow his channel as well. He's got a fantastic self-build channel and he's run into very similar problems to this, but uh, yeah, you've, you've got to watch the video. He's had a real horror story with water getting in to the subfloor to the point that he's literally had uh, frogs living under the floor, which isn't particularly what you want. I've included a link in the description to his channel. It's well worth checking out. Fantastic work, Aiden. I'm really impressed with some of the stuff that you're going through there. But yeah, he basically ended up having to dig down and tank all of the external walls below the DPC to stop dampness getting into the subfloor area. And it, oh man, my heart went out to you, Aiden. That was a thankless task, but it has to be done. You've got to get these problems resolved from square one. Otherwise, you're just creating much more more major problems for later down the line. So well done on tackling it properly, not for the faint of heart. But anyway, we're obviously building out at the back of the property here, so this external soil level will eventually become an internal floor. So I would certainly hope that once all these problems are resolved, all of this dries out really nicely. Now folks, I'm sorry to do this. I know I hate Christmas adverts in November. We've got ages until Christmas Eve and judging by the demographic of this channel, there's gonna be a long time before you guys start doing your Christmas shopping. But I also know there's a significant proportion of the channel are a lot more organized than that. And you will probably be thinking about ordering your Christmas presents now. And the Gosforth Handyman, now infamous Christmas jumpers, are back in stock. They're on the Gosforth Handyman store. They are limited edition, they will only be on there for about two or three weeks maximum and then they'll be taken off again because there'll be no chance after that that we'll get them to you in time for Christmas. So if you do want a Gosforth Handyman Christmas jumper, get on to gosforthhandyman.com slash shop now and get it ordered. We are shipping worldwide. Shipping to the EU is a little bit of a problem at the minute because the powers that be decided to remove the lower limits of what you've got to do for VAT registration in EU and it's become horrifically complicated. But I think what we're going to do is just basically say that import taxes are going to be your responsibility to sort out when it arrives. Now, I don't know if that's going to delay things or not. If it does, I sincerely apologise, but we've got no way around it. I don't have a massive accounting team to look after global VAT registration thresholds. But anyway, we will do our utmost best to get stuff to you in time for Christmas. We've got plenty of Gosford Handyman tape measures and very shortly, hopefully, fingers crossed, there will be a brand new eight meter version of the Gosforth Handyman tape measure, which I know a lot of you have been after, and they will be on the shop very, very soon. So keep an eye out, subscribe to the Gosforth Handyman newsletter. I'll let you all know via the newsletter when the eight meter ones are available. I'll put it on Instagram as well. So make sure you follow Gosforth Handyman on Instagram. Anyway, back to it. And 
I was pretty convinced it would be some sort of drainage problem at the back. I thought it could have been a, a dodgy water pipe, but it, the water pipe turned out to be fine. So really the only other thing containing water at the rear of the property was the drainage at the back. And I think we can safely say we have found the root cause of those problems. So this is the gully drain serving the rear of the property. And we recently had the mini digger pulling out a lot of the kind of old concrete and slabs and stuff around here. But we were very, very careful not to damage this drain because I wanted to kind of show what state it was in without me making it even worse, if that makes sense. So I've meticulously removed the concrete and slabs from around here. But can you see, I mean, you can see straight away, this is completely broken. This is part of the trap, and then this is the pipe that goes down to the main sewer. It's, it's all capped off now and blocked, so it doesn't do anything anymore. But you can see the state that this is in. I mean, I can't even really touch it without it falling to bits. As I say, when we were pulling all of the concrete surrounding this out, we were extra, extra careful. But you can tell really that th this is old damage because you can see by the, the edges of these, that these are cracks that have been there for a long time. They've got dirt in and whatnot, and that's not from us. So uh, yeah, let's have a pop a glove on and we'll see how much we can get out while holding the camera. I might have to set the camera up somewhere. But bear in mind what I need you to think about here. This drain served all water coming out of the property um, other than the toilet. So basically this did the shower the kitchen sink, the washing machine, that well basically the entire kitchen drained through this, the entire bathroom drained through this other than the toilet, all of the rainwater downpipes for the rear of the property drained through this as well and I mean the drain the rainwater downpipes were all broken anyway and most of the water was just kind of trickling down this back wall and going behind this gully I would say 50% of the rainwater actually went into the gully, but it makes no difference when the gully's completely smashed and uh, none of the water is even getting down into the main drain, or maybe like a small amount of it was. Let's have a look. So, I'll get this top bit off first. And, I mean, you can see that whole top section is the collar on the adjoining pipe is completely smashed to pieces. Let's uh, get all of this out. As I say, none of this is caused by me. This has been like this for years and years. Here's the bottom of the trap. This is gonna get a little bit minging. Just get some of this out. I'm trying not to get extra stuff down it because I want to show you what it was like. This is exactly what was, oh, we've got a nice slug living under there. And not only would this have caused problems for obviously water getting out of this trap, but little bits of broken clay will have ended up going down the drain and into the main public sewer. And that's what causes blockages, folks. So <laughs> look at this, there is just nothing, there's nothing left of it. Here's the uh, inflow pipe to the sewer here, you can just about. So that's the inflow pipe to the sewer. It's blocked off at the other end, so it doesn't matter if anything goes down it. But again, I'm just trying to show you what it was like in its original state. i to do this one-handed. It's a little bit tricky. Can't get that one out. As you can see, Look, it's just full of soil and... There we go. Right, we're just about at... It's, it's destroyed. Let me try and set the tripod up while I clear a bit more material. Tripod. <laughs> By tripod, I mean bucket. Now, that, that is congealed fat. Look at that. Nice little fat berg there. So now we're at the bottom of the trap.
There we go. Hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here. Let me get a pokey stick because I don't particularly want to put my bare hands down there. Although it's look, there's no sewage water as such. It's all just, uh, as I say, washing machine, sink waste, shower waste. So this is a trap here. So the trap deliberately stores water to seal the drain off so that smells from the sewer don't come up through the uh, through the grill, so through this bit here. So obviously that sits on there. Water sits in the trap at the bottom there, stops the smells coming out and then the water should nice and freely run over here and off down the sewer. And as you can see, every part of this, I mean, the whole thing was smashed. I'd, I didn't break any of this. Every single part of this was already broken right down to, to this level here. So water would have happily been flowing out of here into the foundations of the house, under the floor. I mean, you can see over here how much mortar has been washed out of the brickwork. My word, no wonder there were damp problems. There is literally, there's no mortar left between these bricks. It's all been washed away. Rather than going down the sewer, it's all been getting funneled neatly under the house. And as I've said before, in situations like this, you're almost better disconnecting the drains because at least then you don't have all your wastewater getting funneled to one single location. Shower, bathroom sink, kitchen sink, washing machine, all the rainwater for the entire house. All of that's been getting flushed down here for years and years. This has been broken for probably at least 20 years, but it could be, it could have been broken for 50 years. With the amount of mortar that's been flushed out of this brickwork, I think this has been a problem for a lot longer than we originally thought. And as I say, no wonder the poor house has had damp problems. It's been fighting a losing battle from square one. And this will never be a problem again now, because this drain, well, once we build the extension, there won't even be a drain here. There won't even be a wall here because this is going to be an opening through into the rest of the house. So it really doesn't matter that we've got mortar issues here. We don't need to repoint it or anything. But I just wanted to show you, this is what happens when you don't maintain a property. When drains that were obviously damaged, there was obviously damp problems in the house. There was wallpaper literally falling off the walls. We had visible damp rising up the walls. Nobody has bothered looking into it. This is below the, da the DPC. The DPC is all the way up here, the damp proof course, or the damp proof uh, bitumen layer, which is absolutely fine, by the way, is at this level here. Water's getting flushed into the property well below the DPC level. So no wonder there were problems. But as I say, this could have been picked up and identified and rectified years and years ago, but unfortunately, because this is a property of zero maintenance and nothing has really been done to this property since it was first built a hundred years ago. And this is a hundred year old gully here. This is original to the property. Because of that, that's what's caused all these other problems that have just had a knock on effect down the line. So folks, honestly, drains, water will kill your property. If you don't deal with broken drains, broken gullies, um, water getting in through, whether it's broken, damaged pipes, leaks, that sort of thing. Water is a killer for properties. You've got to get water away from your property as quickly and effectively as you possibly can without it just kind of flushing down little gaps and holes. I mean, look, this is all, nothing left of it. As I say, I didn't do that. That's the route down into that pipe. I'll take a little bit more out because it'll be interesting once we get this gully out, it'll be interesting to see where water has been flowing. There might be a little bit of evidence of where the, what direction the water's taken, but you know, gravity, it's pretty logical what direction it's gonna go. And it's just found the easiest route it possibly can, which was through the, the mortar in the brickwork.
So I managed to get the old, what was left of the gully out. There it is. I mean, the gully itself, the bottom of it's not cracked or anything, but it makes no odds because water's just been running around it and down all the cracks. Uh, I thought I saw a crack there, but it's not. But yeah, the bottom of the trap was all absolutely fine because it's pretty solid. It's quite thick clay at that point, but the water's just been coming through all, all of the gaps everywhere else. So uh, yeah, there's uh, where the gully was sitting. And you can see we're now, let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five courses below DPC. It's coming on six courses below DPC and water has clearly washed all of the mortar out the brickwork there and the, the ground was really really damp very very easy to dig into i've grubbed up the what's left of that pipe but it's only like a two meter section if that and it's blocked up at the other end anyway so it's completely blocked that pipe it's, it's redundant it doesn't do anything anymore this will all get uh, just backfilled and eventually it'll have a concrete oversight and then a suspended timber floor exactly like what we did in the kitchen but yeah there you go that's what's left of the gully and as I say you can tell the bits that I just broke because it's like bright white clay all the bits that have been broken for years and years are more of a kind of gray color I'll show them side by side you see the difference between that it's hard to say in this light, but I can straight away tell that's been broken for years. In case you're wondering as well what's happening with our rainwater at the rear of the property, or water from the rear of the property. So all the bathroom waste now goes through this new pipe run around the corner and it now goes to the front of the house. So there's no house waste at the minute coming to the rear of the property. So the only thing that we do have to contend with is rainwater and at the moment we've got some temporary downpipe material which I'll include a link in the description to this stuff it's just basically it comes on a big long tube and you just cut it to whatever length you need really really handy in remedial work such as this so that you can just temporarily get the rainwater away from the property the further the rainwater is away from the property the better so I'm going to backfill this because that is now redundant and that is our final job prior to starting on the groundworks for the extension. So uh, yeah, there you go. But I hope you found that useful. May this be a lesson to everyone about why it's so important to maintain properties and it's so important to make sure your drains are in good condition. Luckily, this hasn't caused too big a problems. I mean, don't get it wrong, I've had to replace the entire kitchen floor and whatnot. But uh, luckily it hasn't caused any structural problems but this could have caused subsidence you know maintain your properties folks if you're going to own an old property you've got to maintain it you can't leave drains in that sort of state anyway for now take care folks and i shall see you next time on the next episode on our journey to renovating this 1920s property take care folks tell you bye